Hi everyone, welcome to the Talks with the Networks. Today we're gonna have Brian. He's the managing director of the LockNet Global Network. Come and join me for a coffee with Brian and learn more about LockNet. Hi, I'm Xavi. I'm a freight forwarder based in China. Join me as I share with you my friends in the forwarding industry, stories and experiences of my 10 years of logistics in Europe and China. Welcome, Brian, how are you? Fine, thanks, Xavi, and thanks for the opportunity to talk to you and uh, whoever's out there listening. Thank you, thank you, Brian, uh, for being uh, here. As you know, we are conducting these talks with the networks to learn a little bit more about uh, what's going on with, with the networks and what's uh, actually behind, right? As you know, we have uh, six questions with six minutes. We might get a bit longer, don't worry for that. So let's, let's move on, uh, Brian. Just to introduce a little bit about uh, LockNet Global, uh, what is where is uh, LockNet located and, and who is actually behind LockNet? Okay, well, uh, I am based in Thailand. LockNet um, Group has an office in Thailand. We also have offices, um, 11 offices around the, around the world. Um, LockNet itself is registered in Hong Kong. And originally we, we conducted business through Hong Kong from Thailand. Uh, since then, I think about 2015, we've registered in the US um, and our chairman has moved back to Miami. So effectively you could sort of call our Miami office the, the HQ, but um, for all intents and purposes, LogNet operates from Thailand. Good, good. Um, we know that LockNet is part of the big group, big family of the WCA, right? Part of WCA world, that's correct. Good. And just coming to the second question related to that also that might be linked to WCA. When did, when did LockNet start the journey and, and, and why, why LockNet was born? Okay. Um, LogNet started in March 2010 and registered our first member, I think, in about the first week of that month. But the concept of LogNet Global had been considered well before then. WCA family at that time had about 3,000 members. Um, so already very successful, very big, recognized as the number one network. But there were issues in that some markets have become congested. And as you always get, some agents, they're, they're looking for a smaller group. Um, also, in some instances, there were conflicts of interest. Somebody's going, oh, my, my best buddies in WCA or my worst enemies in WCA, I don't want to join. So the concept of LogNet Global was set up in order to provide an exclusive, a more exclusive network for those people who weren't prepared to join WCA. So we had, we had um, by the time we started in 2010, there was already a, a, a kind of a, a list of potential members ready to join up. Good, good, nice, nice, uh, nice story. We, we understand, of course, and I agree that, uh, of course, it, it seems natural that that, that LockNet borns from, from WCA to, to give more exclusivity, right? And moving to, to, the, um, to the third one, and maybe related to the, the, to the past one, Brian, why now LockNet is represented more or less in 107 countries, over 100 countries, uh, you guys have over 400 members representing yeah, more than 600, 600 offices. And the question is, why? why? Why those why those 400 members are joining LockNet, Brian? Uh, okay, well, uh, originally the, the policy was we would limit markets. Generally, three to five members in any major port, major city, etc. So we're already capped the potential of um, the size of the, the network. 
but as I said, we, we had a list of people ready to join. So we start in March, but what we had at that time as a brand new network, we had an added cherry on the cake that was that anyone who joined LogNet Global would get access to the WCA group to give them business. The idea being, you join a network, you're the only one there, what do I do? Um, WCA was in place in order to allow you to find agents to handle your business. The concept being, okay, you don't find your, your partner for life, but you, you have somebody there you can work with immediately. That was very attractive. And so for the first really two, two, three years, we grew very quickly filling up markets in here. And within the first couple of years, a lot of the major markets were already considered closed. And to this day, many are still um, closed. We're not, we're not recruiting more members for certain, uh, certain places. I see, I see. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. And just moving a bit deeper on that, on, on LogNet, um, if I ask you, uh, Brian, to describe uh, LogNet in one word, whatever you want, like a noun, an adjective, or, or one sentence, right, to, to explain either to the members or to the ones who are still not members, or maybe to your family, how would you describe uh, LogNet? Okay, well, I'll go for the the sentence, sure. and this is our slogan. It's on our web, uh, website. It's logistics partners you can trust, and the the word, the important word, being trust. So, what we want to do, um, in order to be successful in a network, you've got to trust the other people that you're working with. So. We, um, in our recruitment of agents, we ensure that we've got reliable, robust companies whom you can put trust in. Um, on top of that, though, there's a, second, a secondary trust, which is trust the network, trust us, so that we will be fair with you. We will treat all members equally. So we've been going for now 11 years, but we treat a new member exactly the same way as we we treat one of our 11 year old members. Importantly though, in order to build on that trust, um, we do hold annual conferences. And I think uh, attending the conference, meeting people face to face is still very important or Zoom to Zoom, you know, in the current environment. People like to meet the other person and are not really prepared to just choose a name on a list and then trust them with their their number one client. You know. Sure, sure, I understand. Uh, thank you, thank you, Brian. It, it, it can describe very well uh, logistics partners that you can trust. And, and absolutely, I, I agree on you, um, Brian, that, the, that the, the conferences are very, very important. Um, and yes, nowadays we are doing maybe the Zoom, Teams, whatever, online, and, and we should take part of that also, which is uh, very, very important. Go Going towards, towards the end uh, with two more questions, Brian. This one is a bit not tricky, but um, as you know, forwarders, the freight forwarders, my, my worry about the payment protection and the credit terms as we commented in another talks payment protection is how safe you are to receive the money for the service that you provided as a freight forwarder while credit terms we commented that is how long it's going to to, to pass to spend until you get the money right like maybe 30 days 60 days 90 days 120 days whatever so in terms of LockNet, Brian, how does uh, LockNet Global deals with that? Is there any specific rule on payment protection, on credit terms? How, how is LockNet, doing, LockNet Global doing on that? Okay, well, we provide payment protection so that um, if one of your partners does not pay you, then um, based on the terms of what is covered on the terms and conditions, sure. then we will cover that payment. 
it's not credit as such and we do not dictate the terms that you should work uh, uh, use with your partners so we provide an environment saying ultimately if you don't get paid by your partner you can come to us and the, the freight effectively freight and handling charges are covered but we say it's up to you we can't uh, dictate how your business operates um, you know recently have been a lot of PPE movements and airlines require payment up front Yes. So we can't really say to you, oh, you've got to offer credit when you're having to outlay funds to the uh, the airline direct. So you, you equally expect payment up front. So we tell members, this is the environment. Um, now you decide how you want to play it. Our financial protection is up to 100,000 US dollars with each and every other member in the group. So. There's effectively there's um, a cap on working with a particular member, but if you're working with lots of members, each, each um, set of business is covered up to a maximum of one hundred thousand US dollars. And um, and that we're going back to trust. Um, you can trust us. The the scheme works, um, and there you can feel confident to to say work with those other partners and give them credit if you so wish. Wow, it sounds, uh, I believe it sounds really good uh, nowadays and very unique uh, on the payment protection, 100,000 US dollars. Uh, definitely one of the one of the highest, if not the highest in the market. And, and yes, of course, uh, the credit, the the credit terms, as many others also commented, uh, I understand that it depends, right? It will depend on the on, on the partners. That's right, yes. Brian, the last one, the last one. Um, tough, tough year, exciting year, challenging year in 2020 for all of us. Uh, no, net, no conferences at all. But uh, I'm very sure Locknet Global and WCA Group have been thinking a lot on that and planning 2021. What are the plans of, of Locknet for 2021? And, and, and most important, Brian, how are you adapting? How is Locknet Global adapting to this new situation? Okay, well, this brings me to where I'm sitting. You see my background here is... Um, the Royal Cliff Hotel in Pathia. Um, in March 2020, we should have been there celebrating our 10th anniversary. Um, obviously, that never happened. Um, 2020, all the um, face-to-face conferences were cancelled. At the moment, we have our can um, conference rescheduled for December of 2021. So we've still got a booking with the hotel. We've moved it as far to the end of the year as possible. And fingers crossed, we may be able to have um, a face-to-face -face meeting at that time. All depends on the conditions in place um, with regard to travel restrictions, etc. So we've got a book in. We may get our 10th conference going. In the meantime, though, what we did last year um, because we have a big team, uh, our IT team spent time developing a virtual conference system. So Lognet Global used that in October. We had it was nearly 200 or so delegates joining us for a virtual conference, very similar to this. The plan for this year is we'll probably do a game in March, late April, March. We haven't yet scheduled. We've kind of seen how things go, but um, WCA have got a meeting um, just next month. So we'll let that get out the way and then we will probably schedule another meeting for ourselves. I mean, it's, it's an unknown. Obviously the virtual world is becoming more important to people, but the general view from members is they want to get back to some normality where they can get to meet, shake hands and hug their partners and meet new friends. It's 
the business revolves around um, meeting people, but we're adapting. Um, so we're providing services that will allow us to continue, um, but really all of us want to get back to some normal because the, the face-to-face -face meetings are still very important. Sure, sure. Definitely face-to-face uh, -face meetings are very, very important, very necessary. I'm very sure uh, they will come back uh, sooner or later. Uh, Brian, thanks uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, nice to learn about more about LockNet Global, how how was born back in 2010 uh, from the need of of the WCA, let's say, for a more exclusive, right, more exclusive uh, network. Um, now more than 400 members uh, are trusting uh, trusting LogNet as one of the logos, logistics partners uh, you you can trust. Nice uh, nice coverage on payment protection, uh, of course, uh, um, payment term, uh, credit term. Um, Payment terms uh, will be discussed uh, among members, and I'm very right. sure if not if not December this year, uh, sooner or later, of course, uh, we might the, the, the Lochnet partners might might join uh, the Royal Cliff in Pattaya in 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 the beautiful country of uh, Thailand. We we hope so, and if Thailand is currently where we've got the book in. If necessary, we may have to move elsewhere. But we we would like to have our tenth conference um, as a a face to face meeting. Um, you can't really have it as a virtual, so we will just keep postponing um, until the time we uh, we have to. Sure, sure. Brian, once again, thank you very much uh, for joining us, uh, to joining uh, the Talks with the Networks. Thank you very much, Brian. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Thanks. Bye for now. Bye.